of you guys got snow overnight? Wiggle your ears if it's still snowing. We got a lot of snow here. We'll go out into it today. Or let's say hello to the snow. Hello to the snow. Hello to the snow. Hello to the snow. It's good to be here with you. Let's say hello to moms and dads. 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 It's good to be here with you. Let's say hello to our grandparents. Hello to our grandparents. Hello to our grandparents. Hello to our grandparents. It's good to be here with you. Let's say hello to our siblings. Hello to my siblings. Hello to my siblings. Hello to my siblings. It's good to be here with you. Let's say hello to our animals. Hello to our animals. Hi, Jane. Hello to my animals. Hi, Jean. Hello to my animals. It's good to be here with you. Let's say hello to ourselves. That's important. Hello to myself. Hi, self. Hello to myself. Hello to myself. It's good to be here with you. Hello to our friends. Hello to my friends. Hello to my friends. Hello to my friends. It's good to be here with you. I'm glad I'm here with you. Hello, friends. I'm glad to be here with you today. I'm going to whoosh the guitar. Whoosh. There we go. Let's do our calendar. We have lots to talk about today. Days of our week song. Days of the week. Days of the week. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Yay, today! Look, one and a six. Sixteenth. Today is Thursday. April 16th. Yesterday was Wednesday, April 15th. Today is Thursday, April 16th. Tomorrow is Friday, April 17th. But today is Thursday, April 16th. Since it's Thursday, there's a T and an H. Our T made out of the macaroni and cheese boxes and the H. Together, the T kind of makes a T and the H makes a H, but together they make a TH is for Thursday. TH is for the great outdoors with my um, lavender from last summer, but let me tell you, there's no, we're not going to see the lavender outside today. Hoo-wee, I have some flowers starting to grow. Oh, we got a lot of snow, didn't we? Whoo, I hope those flowers that have bloomed or those bushes that have started blossoming hold tight and don't freeze too much. Today's Thursday, April the 16th. We like to talk about the great outdoors on Thursday. Today we're going to do a little reading about one of my favorite birds. Actually, I like lots of birds, but this is one of my favorites right now. The bald eagle. 
I'm going to come close to you so you can see it. There we go. Let's see. It's probably right around there. The bald eagle. Oh, let me read it. I don't know if I can read the Latin name. Haliatus leucocephalus. Haliatus leucocephalus. I might be saying that wrong. <clears throat> the bald eagle, the American icon. Even before the U.S. had adopted its constitution, it had designated the bald eagle as its national bird. Large and suitably noble looking with fierce yellow eyes, striking white feathered head and tail, a yellow beak, and yellow feet with black talons. How many of you guys know what talons are? Yeah, it's like the big long claws at the end of a foot of a bird, especially a bird of prey. With black talons, the bald eagle can be a powerful predator. These eagles are most commonly seen in trees along the banks of inland rivers and lakes or soaring on wings that can reach a span of eight feet. Now hold on a minute. <clears throat> this wingspan here of mine is just about five feet, five and a half feet. They can be eight feet wingspan. Hoo-wee, taller than your dad. Their fate is a mirror of conservation history in America. They were first revered, then reviled as a pest and shot down. In large numbers by bounty hunters during the 19th century. Yep, sometimes, I guess, in earlier times when people were trying to farm a lot and they didn't like their livestock pecked at, or they were trying to hunt a lot for food, and then sometimes they got carried away and wanted to have the feathers or had the talons or have different things as signs of power. They kind of hunted down these poor birds, but thankfully they don't anymore. This is a picture here. It says they're members of the hawk family. These eagles have a hooked beak and strong talons. Okay, I'm going to go back here so that I can read some of this here. So pesticide pollution, chiefly DDT during the 1940s and 50s, reduced their number and for decades they were on the National Endangered Species list. But we banned DDT along with added other protective measures and now the bald eagle has been sparked back into recent comeback. Bald eagles use their keen eyesight to spot their prey, mostly large fish, but they also, which they snatch the fish from the water's surface, but they also uh, attack and kill other birds and various small mammals. Their cry is a scream. It says here it's a harsh scream, but it actually, I'm gonna let you listen to it. To me, it actually doesn't sound as harsh as you would think an eagle's scream to be. These are really small pictures. I'm gonna try to hold it up for you so you can see. They're really small. Yeah. Fish are a favorite staple of the bald eagle's diet. And for the first four years of life, bald eagles wear mottled brown plumage. As you'll see in this left picture, the first four years, they're from age from birth to age one, two, three, and four, they don't have white heads. They have this mottled look of kind of speckled brown with white. All right, you ready for some information about the eagles? Dun, dun, dun. Remember, last time we did the eagles, or last time we did the birds, we could do a report. So that's your job. You can do a report about it and write down words or have adults write down words that you remember and or draw pictures of it with all these details and or make, make it a dance about it <clears throat> so that you can remember about bald eagles. So here's the field notes. Are you ready? Get your field notebook out, <clears throat> even if it's just in your brain. Okay, habitat, that's where they live. They usually live near waters, which is like rivers, lakes, marshes, and ponds, or in open country woodlands or mountains. Here um, in near Firestone, we have a bald eagle at our lake. I'm gonna show you something I've been doing for the bald eagle lately, but they like to come, they stay in the high trees, they nest in the high trees, and then they fly over the lake and then dive down to catch fish. And this bald eagle must be kind of young because you know what he does? He kind of plays with the birds and he starts dive bombing the birds on the lake. 
And so whenever the eagle's flying around, the birds all duck underwater. And then he dives down, and then they pop back up again, and they dive down, and they duck underwater. And it's like a funny game that they play together. I don't know. Okay, so they usually live near water. Their range. That's all the places that they can live. Are you ready for this? Get out your maps. They live in Alaska. Most of the lower 48 states of the United States. It breeds in, north, in the north and winters in the southern states. So it breeds um, in the northern states and then uh, over winter when it's really cold, it stays in the southern states. In the southern half of the range, many are permanent residents. So that means in the southern United States, many eagles live there year round. We have eagles that live here year round in Colorado. Diet, what they eat. They eat fish, including salmon, carp, herring, and catfish. They eat small mammals, including rabbits and rodents. Occasionally, they'll eat shellfish, reptiles, and carrion. They often steal food from other predators, especially fish from ospreys. Mm, I haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen an eagle trying to steal something from an osprey yet, but we have both here in Colorado. Nest. They make their nests on a large platform structure, and they make large sticks in tall trees or on cliffs. They line it. Actually, this doesn't say it, but what I was reading the other day is they line the nest with thorns so it sticks to the trees, and then they have a lining of soft material like leaves. Then they do a lining of thorns again and sticks, so it sticks together, and then they do a lining of, um, of feathers. So it's nice, and they do several different layers of that. And then the topmost layer is a layer of nice downy feathers for the babies. But once the babies get old enough to leave the nest, they take out that soft downy so the babies won't stay in the nest. And it's just kind of the sharp pokies, and nobody really wants to get in sharp pokies. So the babies fly away and build their own nests. So they line the nests with soft material, including grass, and they can reuse and add to the nests every year. Eggs, how many eggs do they lay? Usually one to three eggs and bluish white. Their eggs are bluish white. Um, their status, well, they used to be on the endangered species list for a very long time, but um, in recent years, they're thriving. And so now they are delisted, which means they are not an endangered species anymore. Hooray, bald eagle, hooray. All right, I wanna show you guys, or have you guys listen to the sound, to the cry of an eagle. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get this started up here. All right. <laughs> There's the bald eagle. All right, I'm gonna have you guys listen to it cry. See its yellow beak that's got a hook at the end and yellow eyes? Oops, I touched it, I forgot, it's a touch screen. Okay, here is what I want you to listen to. Check this out. That sounds more like a bird of prey. Isn't that amazing? That's the sound that a bald eagle, bald eagle makes. So this is from the website. Let me find it for you guys. The Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Ornithology is the study of birds, and um, the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, some of it you have to pay for, but some of it you get great access to. So if you guys, parents and older siblings, if you're watching and listening, if you could go to Cornell Lab of Ornithology, if you look that up, I think it's called birdsoftheworld.org. Um, you can learn a lot about birds, and they have auditory, so you can hear their sounds, and they have visuals, so you can see the pictures, and they tell a little bit about where the birds live and um, about each bird. It's behavior just like what we're reading about. So you could do your own research on the birds. Passing that along for you. All right, we did that. Let's do a fly eagle sound song. And then we're going to go out. 
through the Cheyenne circle dance. <clears throat> um, and so what I would do is I will take, I will find a, so I was watching the eagle and it was so pretty. And I was like, oh, I should pick up a stick and make a spirit stick and thank the eagle for being here. Um, so I found a stick on the ground under the cottonwood tree and brought it home and washed it off. And then I wrapped it. You can wrap it with yarn or with embroidery floss or with thread or with beads or with material. There's lots of different things you can use to decorate it with. Um, you can even marker, color it with markers. And so then I and decorated it and then I'd put it by the tree. Every day I'd go out and put it by the tree. And then I'd find another stick and bring it back. And so this is my fifth stick that I've made. Uh, and every day when I set it by the tree, I thank the eagle for being there. And then I walk away and it's kind of a nice little pretty shrine for the eagle right now. Um, so yeah, I've been making a spirit sticks and setting them by the tree. And so that's a nice thing you guys can do if you want to in your backyard. Um, you can find a stick uh, near a tree in your backyard and it doesn't have to be for the eagle. It could be for anything out in the backyard that you find that's beautiful. Maybe it's the tree itself. Maybe it's um, uh, a squirrel that you like in the backyard and you want to say thank you to. Maybe you just want to say thank you to Mother Earth because you are getting great food right now and you're able to hang with your family and you can make spirit sticks for that. And so you just say thank you and while you're making the stick you think of all the things you're thankful for um, and you listen and hear if anything comes in your head or in your heart about what you're thankful for. Um, and then you finish the stick and you offer it. And oftentimes you can offer it with a little bit of food, but I have not been offering it with food because it is not my home and I don't want to attract other rodents to a natural area that's not mine or leave a mess that's not mine. So I've just been offering a stick. But in your backyard, you can offer a little gift too of food to nature. All right, so that's the spirit stick. That's what I've been doing. All right, we're gonna go outside, hooray! And we're gonna get dressed, and I have some water that's heating up in the stove so that we can get some water to my poor chickens. They are cold and ready to get out. Tank, let's get you dressed first. I don't know if you're, oh, I forgot to mention, we all are wearing our sweaters today, because it's the sweater week. Sweater and leg warmers, here's my leg warmers and my sweater. One thing that I am doing to make sure that I'm dressed for outside is I have my thermals on underneath. So make sure if you guys are gonna go outside later today, put on nice warm layers so that your body stay healthy and warm. For me, that includes a thermal layer of wool. And then I have my thermal wool socks on and a wool sweater is a great idea. And that's what this is too, a wool sweater. So that's nice to keep me warm too. All right, I'm actually gonna take off tank sweater and put on, well actually I'll leave his sweater on. Give him extra warmth and put on his little vesty vest. He doesn't love this vesty. I'll strap the bottom when you stand up. I know, you don't love your bestie, but it's helpful for him. How many of you guys don't really like having to wear your winter coats or something like maybe your long underwear because it's itchy? Yeah, it makes sense. Sometimes the clothes that we wear to protect us aren't the most comfortable. Sometimes there's more comfortable stuff out there, but sometimes there isn't. And so, but it is important that we stay warm. I know a lot of kids that I work with don't like wearing their mittens because they can't move their fingers as well. And I understand. But when we're outside and it's cold, sometimes that's important. So I'm gonna put on my buff to protect my neck. Do, 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 do. Um, this sweater doesn't have a hood, so I'm not gonna pull up my hood. But I am gonna put on my hat, my warm winter hat. Do, 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 do. I took off my wings because I, I don't want them to get crushed underneath my jacket. I'm gonna put on my snow pants because it is snowing out there. Just a little bit now, but it's definitely deep snow. And I tuck in all my clothes in my snow pants so that the snow doesn't get into or on my regular clothes. All right, what else do I have? I have my scarf. I like to wear my buff so I can pull it up over my mouth if I get cold, over my nose and mouth. But And then I just put the scarf on for extra warmth. And I have my jacket. My jacket's a little dirty because I usually wash it in the spring, but we've had so much winter weather that I haven't been able to wash it yet. has a zipper in the armpits. I don't need the zipper open today. Does your coat have a zipper in your armpits? It's kind of funny. I think it helps vent the heat when you're going on hikes and when you're skiing. I don't ski though. And then I have to put on my winter boots. Winter boots to keep my legs warm. You guys have all these kind of winter clothes too? If you're living in Colorado and if it snowed today,
today, you guys can ask your parents if later you can go outside too and put on your winter clothes and get all bundled up to go play in the snow. How many of you guys like to go sledding in the snow? Yeah, wiggle your fingers if you like to go build snow forts in the snow. Wiggle your elbows if you've ever made a snow angel or a snow fairy in the snow. Yeah, there's so many fun things to do in the snow. All right, I think I got everything ready. Tank, you wanna come with me outside? He may not wanna come, because he doesn't usually like the outside snow, especially if it's up past his tummy. You wanna come outside? You wanna go outside? I don't think he wants to go outside today, so it'll just be you and me and the chickens outside today. I think Tank wants to stay inside. <clears throat> Here we go, I'm gonna grab our water from the kitchen. Bye, Tank. Have a good time inside. We're going to go outside. <laughs> I'm going to turn it around so you see me. Hello, friends. All right, let me see if I can grab our water with just one hand. I'm not sure. Here we go. I see I have the water on the stove. Look down into it. See the steam rising? Yeah, it's evaporating. Yep, all right, I think I can grab it. Ta-da, I grabbed it. Fly, eagle, fly, eagle, fly in the sky. Oh, I just love that eagle song. Give me a few seconds while we get outside. It might be a little shaky visuals here. I got a lot of stuff to go through. Da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da. Ooh, it's steaming more, because we're getting closer to outside. That's very cold. Ooh -wee. But I had to get the water warm. You'll see why when we get outside. <clears throat> there we go. Put down our pot. Can I put this up for you guys? So you can watch the chickens. Look at the world. Look. Oh my goodness. There is so much snow today. Look at how deep that snow is. Whoa. I already shoveled a path. Just a little one. Here's the water that's steaming out in the snow. Let's see if you can see the steam in the picture. I can see it from here. There we go. See the steam and the snow falling? You want to know why I have that steamy water? Check this pile of snow out. Guess what this pile of snow is? Ah. Ah. It's the poor chicken's water, which is definitely not water anymore. It's all frozen. I'm gonna open it up for them. Whew. And here we go. Pour some of that hot water in for them. Not too hot, just right. Good. The other thing I'm gonna get I'm going to set this down so you can watch me. Oopsie, I'm doing that wrong. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Oh, I had this upside down for you guys. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. You watched me pour that upside down. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Let's move that over. Pick this up so you can watch what we got going on. Make it bigger. Ta-da! There we go. Now, now I'm going to get some water for them. Some electrolytes for their water. I'm going to bring my drum out. Ta-da! And get some electrolytes for their water. So, let me pull the water over here so you can see it better. And here's some electrolytes for them. I think you might have seen this before. The chicken electrolytes. And I dump it in their water. And it mixes, mixes, mixes. And gives them all the stuff that they need. And then, there's their water. Here's the bottom. I screw the bottom on. 
and then turn it over. And now they should have some water. Ta -da! Let's go get the chickens out. We're gonna walk the path that I kind of... Sometimes chickens like to go out in the snow and sometimes they don't. Usually if you put straw down, they're a little bit more willing to walk in the snow. I did not put straw down, so we'll see. Whoa, I have to step in some big deep snow up to my knees to get over to the back. Look at how much snow is on the coop. Whoa, that is a spring snowstorm. If I've ever seen one. Do, do, do. Whew. Okay, chickens. Whoa, the tree took off my hat. <laughs> Silly tree. All right, chickens. Come on out, ladies, into the great outdoors. Whoa, chicken in the face. Chicken in the face. Hello, chickens. Now they have a heated water right here. So that way I don't have to fill up the other water all the time. So if they want to stay in the coop, they can get heated water. But if they want their food, which I'm going to shake right now for them, here guys, let's go grab their food. Thanks for coming with me and feeding the chickens today. There is their food. I also, so they have their food right here, which is their little mm, pellets, we call it, which is all the food that they need all mashed up. Cuck, 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 cuck. Oh, here they come, here they come. Look at them walk the path, they like the path. Hooray, they like the path. All right, I just poured their pellets. They're coming over to get their pellets. I also have something special here for them, which is some scratch, which is kind of like, it's healthy food for them, but it's kind of snack-like too. It's got a lot of seeds in it. And that, I guess, would be kind of our equivalent of eating um, some lovely walnuts and pistachios and pecans, some yummy food that are still healthy for us, but we don't usually get to eat a whole lot. There are the ladies. They are loving it up. Well, I thought today, since we're out here with the chickens and in the snow, we can watch them eat a little bit and talk a little bit about the chickens again. When chickens go to sleep, they like to perch on roosts. I will show you what I have in the coop for a roost for the chickens. Here we go, let's go back to the coop and we can see what our chickens here like to roost on. The reason they like to roost is a few different factors. Often they'll roost in trees because it's safer from predators. <gasps> Look what I have in the coop today. <gasps> we have one egg, two eggs. What? Three eggs today. They, three of the chickens laid me some eggs. See if they hit any of their other eggs. Sometimes they do that. Those silly chickens. I don't see any. We have three eggs in the coop today. Wow, guys. So I was going to show you the roosts that I have here. Yes, there's some poop on them because that's what chickens do and that's what most birds do is they poop. Usually the poop lands in the ground and that's actually why they roost is so that they don't have to lay in their poop. So their poop goes to the ground. Let's see if there's any poop. Oh, there's some poop. See it? So the poop goes to the ground and they can roost happily and sleep. The other thing is, is that they roost to keep parasites out of them, like worms and, and um, lice and other things that try to eat the, the chicken's skin or its blood and make the chicken sick. So they roost so that the parasites can't get to them. The other thing that, that roosts do is oftentimes chickens roost in tree branches. And let me show you our tree. To give an idea, I'm gonna bring these eggs inside. Look at these eggs, we got three eggs today. One, two, three eggs. And let's see how many chickens we have here. We have one, two, three, four, five chickens. If we have three eggs and five chickens, how many chickens did not lay an egg? Five minus three is two. 
two chickens have not laid eggs yet. We shall see. We shall see if they'll lay their eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and put these eggs inside because chickens will actually eat their own eggs. Because, and actually, sometimes I feed the chickens their own eggs because it's healthy for them. But sometimes I like to eat them too. All right, we're gonna look at the tree and see why chickens might roost in a tree. So see how high up that tree branch is? In the wild, chickens like to roost in trees because think about their predators, like foxes. Usually foxes don't climb into trees. Now, raccoons are a predator, but raccoons can climb into trees. So roosting in a tree is not gonna protect a chicken from a raccoon and from some other predators either, like eagles or hawks, but it will protect them from some predators. And so that's why they roost in the trees, to protect themselves or on a perch, to protect themselves. Now, we're gonna sing a song about being joyful about being out in the snow. But first, before we do that, let's shake down the trees. What I like to do, if we've had a heavy, wet snow like this, oh my goodness, look at my knees. I'm all the way up to the top of my boots in the snow. Hoo-wee! So I like to sometimes shake, shake, shake all the heavy snow off the trees so it doesn't break my fragile branches. Gentle, gentle, very gentle shakes. Very gentle shakes. Get some of that heavy snow off of my pretty trees so that it's branches. Ooh, I should be wearing my gloves for this. Whoa. Oh, got a little bit of heaviness. See how this tree branch is really bent over in snow? Whew. So if I shake, shake, shake this tree, oh, the tree branch pops right back up. See how this one is bent because of the snow? If I shake, shake, shake the heaviness off, it flops back up. Get ready, we're gonna be snowed on. Whoa! Whew. We just got snowed on from all the trees, from the snow from the tree we shook off. We're gonna shake off the tree branches on the other trees too. But let's get singing our song first before my fingers freeze. Whoo wee Okay. There we go. Let's see if you can see. Oh yeah, we can see. You can't really see the chickens though. Hmm. Well, when they walk in front, you can see the chickens. We'll dance our dance. We'll sing our song and dance our dance. Let's see, maybe if I scoot it back, you can see the chickens and the drum. A little bit of the chickens. Let's move them over. Hey ladies, I'm gonna move you over. Ta-da! Ta-da! There you go. Eat away. They really like their scratch. Okay. We're going to sing our song about, I'm going to walk in front, dancing in the snow. <clears throat> Come on, drum, you can do it. <laughs> My glasses are fogging.
picture of the chickens before we head off. They are so funny right now. They're exploring <laughs> the pot. They thought it was very interesting and they climbed on top of it and knocked it over. Silly chickens. <laughs> they're like, hmm, what's this? We like this. Look, I think they're making noise. Oh, one of them was tapping the pot and making, making music. <laughs> All right. Well, goodbye, chickens. It's great to see you, girls. Goodbye, friends. Have a lovely day. Making music. <laughs>